Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Monty Python. Hello again. Welcome back. Let's continue our journey through history's greatest novel. Chapter 68 has an interesting subtitle regarding the bristling adventure that happened to Don Quixote. This is actually a subtle phrase because cerdo, the popular euphemism for pig in Spanish, did not exist in Cervantes' day. Instead, our author has taken his new adjective from the phrase ganado de la cerda, or herd of bristle, which alludes to the rough hairs associated with this animal. In other words, Cervantes prods us to interpret the symbolic meaning of the pigs in this episode. The chapter's initial mythological reference to the moon as Diana seems straightforward, but the fact that Diana is present in the sky but cannot be seen adds a morisco touch to Don Quixote's concerns regarding how to disenchant Dulcinea, a curious sociological detail here Don Quixote has slept the first sleep, but he cannot sleep the second. This refers to the early modern habit of people being active during the night between two separate periods of sleep. The narrator tells us that because Sancho is carefree, he does not suffer from this wakefulness. But Don Quixote wakes his squire anyway in order to complain about the lashes still needed to free Dulcinea. On your life, get up and go off a ways from here, and with good cheer and acknowledged valor, give yourself a good three or four hundred lashes toward those for the disenchantment of Dulcinea. Cervantes is weaving together here two important themes, Sancho's salary and the Inquisition. Once again, the Hidalgo formulates his squire's obligation to him in feudal terms. Good servants, suffer the pains of their masters and share their griefs. In chapter 69, we will see feudalism transformed into capitalism when Sancho finally agrees to perform his penance for a price. Note too that Sancho objects to lashing himself this night on the grounds that he is not religious enough. I am not such a monastic that I want to wake up in the middle of the night and lash myself. In this way, Cervantes is preparing us for the mock inquisitional trial of Sancho, also in chapter 69. Notice how Don Quixote responds by lamenting the breakdown of their feudal relationship. O oh, hardened soul, O oh, pitiless squire, O oh, bread poorly paid and favors poorly conceived those which I have done for you and had planned to do. He still has hope, however, and cites the same phrase from Job chapter 17, verse 12, that was used to describe Zoraida's escape in part one of Don Quixote chapter 41, and which is also found on the shield of Juan de la Cuesta on the cover page of both parts of the novel. Post tenebras spero luthem, meaning after darkness, I hope for light. The compound effect links two of the novel's main objectives, criticizing the Inquisition and affirming the employer-employee relationship. Did you know Diana was the goddess of the hunt? For the second time in just three chapters, Sancho now waxes philosophical. At the beginning of chapter 66, Sancho had described fortune as a drunk woman. Here, he marvels at sleep's power to eliminate all of life's problems. His metaphor is economical. General coin with which all things are bought. He also indicates that sleep is a great equalizer for it affects all castes the same way. Finally, he observes that the downside of sleep is that it approaches death. Only one bad thing attends to sleep, according to what I have heard said, and that is that it resembles death, for there is little difference between a sleeping man and a dead one. Don Quixote is once again impressed. I have never heard you speak, Sancho, so elegantly as now. The philosophical discussion is now interrupted by a deep thunder. Sancho attempts to protect himself beneath his ass. He crouched beneath his gray, putting the bundle of arms and the ass's pack saddle to either side. This fails, however, and without respect for authority, a herd of 600 pigs thrashes our heroes. 
The herd, the grunting, the drive with which these filthy animals arrived, first threw into confusion and then tossed to the ground, the saddle, the arms, the gray, Rocinante, Sancho, and Don Quixote. The episode is another case of poetic justice. Don Quixote says as much, this affront is punishment for my sins, and it is just castigation by the heavens that a defeated knight errant should be devoured by jackals and stung by wasps and trampled by pigs. The figurative assault by jackals, wasps, and pigs is the antithesis of the pastoral fantasy of the previous chapter. But the primary role played by pigs suggests the specific problem of Jewish or Moorish ancestry, since both Jews and Muslims refused to eat pork when these people converted to Christianity, they often made a spectacle of their interest in ham as proof of their new faith. Cervantes mocks the Spanish obsession with blood purity throughout his texts. Here, the humiliating defeat of Don Quixote and Sancho in The Adventure of the Pigs subverts authority and purity, suggesting that both our heroes are impure. More indications of Cervantes' critique of the obsession with ethnic identity follow. Sancho says that if Hidalgos and Squires were related by blood, then it would make sense that they would have to share the punishment of their faults. But he denies this possibility. What do the Panthas have to do with the Quixotes? Similarly, when Sancho goes back to sleep, Without being bothered by debts or security deposits or any pain whatsoever, Don Quixote leans against the trunk of a tree and waxes pastoral again by singing a poem about the trials of love. The narrator, however, makes a point of subverting the scene's allusions to Virgil's pastoral by noting that Fide Amete Berengeli does not declare which kind of tree it was. The intrusion is funny because it is mundane and trivial, mocking picky readers, perhaps, but it also points out the silliness of ethnic distinctions in an episode that's all about pigs. Quixotic Mission Don Quixote says that knights errant are commonly punished by being attacked by which animals? A. Dogs, octopuses, and fish B. Wolves, monkeys, and snakes C. Jackals, pigs, and wasps Correct answer C. Jackals, pigs, and wasps. At the end of chapter 68, Cervantes transitions from the particular ethnic strife of the adventure of the pigs toward a more primeval scene of war between primitive peoples. The next afternoon, as dusk fell, our heroes are surrounded by 15 men who are carrying lances and leather shields and are very much dressed for war. These men escort Don Quixote and Sancho through the countryside as their prisoners. Note three aspects of the encounter. First, once again, Cervantes highlights Sancho's identification with his humanized ass. When the squire tries to speak, one of the men strikes him with a barb as if he were a pack animal. Hardly had he given signs of speaking when one of the men on foot struck him with a spiked stick, and then the gray, no less, as if it too wanted to talk. Second, ethnic distinctions collapse entirely when the warriors characterize our heroes as primitive savages, troglodytes, barbarians, and cannibals, they call them. Finally, the warriors take our heroes to a castle which Don Quixote recognized as clearly that of the Duke, where they had been shortly before. So we have returned to the Duke's palace, except that this time, instead of experiencing courtesy and good manners, Don Quixote and Sancho are received as vanquished, and upon entering the patio, their fear doubled. Notice how impossible it is for us not to read the next chapter. That's all for now. Join me the next time as we continue interpreting the most important literary masterpiece in the Spanish language. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.